Good morning, church. You may be seated. I'd like to welcome all of you to the First Christian Church of Winchester. Um, we're glad to have you in worship today. I see a number of friendly faces. Um, so welcome for those that are visiting. Um, please uh, sign your uh, name on the pew. For those that are on the live stream, uh, please uh, put your name in the comment section so we know that you're in attendance. Um, a couple of announcements today that I'm pulling from the bulletin, as you can see. Jerry is not here this weekend. Uh, he is in Charleston, South Carolina with, uh, I think, three, maybe four, four of our youth uh, senior uh, CYF um, church members, um, the young people. Um, they are doing a service project in Charleston. Um, that mission trip uh, spans from August 6th to August 12th. Uh, Betty Jane Glasscock and uh, Jerry uh, are leading the group. Um, they're um, doing work at the Low Country Food Bank. Um, and please hold them in your prayers as they travel um, for this mission. I understand they're working from about 9 o'clock in the morning to 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, so they're putting them well at work. Um, in addition to that, we have a, um, a fellowship dinner in honor of Miss Lee Puckett for 25 years of service on August 28th. Um, the church will provide uh, a meet for our potluck. Um, we ask that you bring a side, and um, that might be a side dish, a salad, or dessert. The FCC, um, First Christian Church, is going to lead the Pioneer Festival uh, Sunday morning service at 8 a.m. on September 4th. Um, Jerry uh, will um, be leading that service and then back to do our traditional service at 1045. Um, please contact Jerry if you can help or would like to volunteer for setup um, or and music. The administrative board is scheduled for an August 9th Tuesday meeting uh, unless that's changed differently. Um, that'll be uh, held I think at 6 o'clock. On August 14th, uh, we'll do the blessing of the backpack. So if you're going back to college, going back to elementary school, going to kindergarten for the first time, junior high, middle school, all of the above, Shauna and her group, we will uh, b uh, bless the backpacks on uh, Sunday, August 14th, next weekend. Um, in addition to that, uh, First Christian Church will be leading the service at Rosemary Brooks Place at 245 on Sunday, August 21st. Um, in addition, uh, Lisa Johns is hosting her book club on August 22nd at 7 p.m. on that Monday, and the book they're reading is To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. And then lastly, we have our Friendship Bunch outing uh, on Thursday, August 25th at Solomon's Porch and Cafe in Wilmore. Uh, Thursday, August 25th, they'll be meeting at the church at 11 o'clock, so please RSVP for your attendance. Um, other than that, that's all I have. So I'm going to ask Miss Shauna to come up and tell us a little bit about the life of in, going on in our youth, in our church, and bring our call to worship. Good morning, church. As Blanton said, there's a lot going on in the lives of the youth and the children, some things and notes to continue from that. It's back to school season. So we have mentioned this month, we are collecting crayons and markers to forward those to students and communities who need those resources, particularly Eastern Kentucky, that would be a great thing that we could send to them. But we are collecting markers and crayons and school items of that nature. There's the small table that the JYF has set up downstairs, and we already have several bags that people have dropped off, so thank you for your help with that. In addition to those markers and those crayons, the July um, missions that we had, I didn't kind of announce that as well, so those were bottles of water and little drink packets, bottles of water and drink packets, so if you have any of those lying around as well, we will count those up at the end of the month and then send those on their happy way. Our littlest kids love those projects. So the more you bring in, the more they have to count and they have to celebrate. So thank you for all your help with that. Because it is that back to school time, we wanna say some prayers this week and keep the following groups of people in your thoughts. Fayette County is going back to school this Tuesday, wait a second, Wednesday, Wednesday the 10th. So I'll be back to school on the 10th. It sounds like St. Agatha goes back to school on the 11th. 
Does that sound right? On Thursday. And then Clark County goes back to school, the children do, on the 16th. So it's a busy time. I know that makes Boone Avenue lots of congestion with those school buses, but we know that's a special time that we want our teachers and our administration and our students just to remain safe and to have a super successful and peaceful school year. So it is that time of year. There's no programming going on at this time. We will have some pop-up missions here and there, so watch your text. Families, watch your text, watch Facebook. We might have a little outing here and there, but we are planning something big, some new changes after the board meeting this Tuesday as we go into the fall, into September. So some neat programming changes are on the way to help us be more inclusive in time and days of the week. And we look forward to sharing those with everybody after those are announced at the board meeting. And I believe that's all it for announcements today. Will you rise please and join me for the call to worship. Church, we have been called to walk the faithful road and to choose the way of Christ. We are here in worship because we believe that our God is good. We believe we live in that goodness. We are here in worship to affirm our faith and to seek God's direction in our faith journey. Church, let us come together then as God's children follow Christ, and listen for the good news of the things God has done and is doing. Let us lift our hearts and voices in praise and thanksgiving. We are here in worship to gain encouragement in sharing the goodness we have found in God. May our worship, may our lives be an expression of that goodness. May we pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we pray that your presence among us will be made known today. We pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit gathers with us, inspires us, renews us, recreates us in the image of our Creator. Lord Jesus Christ, accept our praise and thanksgiving as we worship you this morning. Accept our open hearts as gestures of our willingness to serve you, to love you, and to be your church. By your presence, make our worship holy. Hear us now, Lord Jesus, as we pray in the manner you taught the disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. Children, we have several today. Come on down to the stairs, and let's share some time together. And everybody how's everybody doing we talked a little bit about this this morning you ready reeve it's time reeve ready here we go all right so we talked about this a little bit so when we sit on the stairs we face our beautiful church don't we we face the lights and the stained glass windows and the pews and all the people and we love it they love it i love it when they say hello so let's say hello to them say good morning church Good morning, church, and look what the church does back. Good morning. Yeah, everybody says good morning. So when we're in this time together, we talked a little bit a couple weeks ago about listening to the speaker and really leaning in and listening for God and, and listening for those moments. So I want us to practice something. Do you see how the church members are all facing us, their knees, their shoulders, their body? They are. So I want you to practice a little bit, and we're going to start with, if Scotty were sitting close to me, I would do it. We're going to start with you. Will you take your knees and turn them towards this part of my leg a little bit? There you go. All right, now turn, do your knees. Turn to this part of my leg just a little bit. Good. Nice. Okay. Look at Eliza's. Good. We're gonna, oh, good. In school, we call that leaning towards the speaker. 
It's a process called slant, and we talked about it at middle school camp this year, didn't we? Yeah, we sure did. And it's a process of using our bodies and our minds and our hearts to all lean into that, to that moment, that message. And the church is really good about doing that with Jerry and today with Blanton. And so I just want us to practice a little bit when we're together on the steps. So I'm getting ready to go back to school. You guys getting ready to go back to school? It's that time of year, isn't it? Yeah. Who? Tomorrow's back to, you're back to school night? Are you excited? Yeah. Scotty's is Wednesday. Anybody else know when you're back to school night? Mine was back last Thursday. Anybody got big things going on before school starts? Yeah, it's a time where there's a crisscross in there of emotions. We're in part, we're sad maybe because summer's ending. It felt very fast. The summer did feel very fast. Yeah, for those really busy summers, it does feel very fast. So it's a combination of feeling sad, but then maybe there's a little bit of excitement, a new start, something different. Sometimes, I don't know about you, it's easy to get a little bored over the summer, kind of, what am I going to do, what am I going to do? Our friends are there, adventures, they're all great things. So it is a back-to-school time. And we talked last week about how we're accepting supplies for schools and, and how, like, teachers feel rich when they have a lot of school supplies. Yeah. And so today in our, in our gospel, Jesus is going to talk about the riches on earth. And I'm going to take it a little step further. To me, this is just Shauna talking as Shauna, not Shauna talking as church. To me, I feel like I've had a blessed, good day if stuff goes easy. Like my car started. I'm like, cha-ching, whew. What a good day. Or I got, you know, enough dollar bills in my pocket to not maybe have to break a 20. I don't know. But when things work, you know, my dishwasher's working, my refrigerator's working, my washing machine's working, that's a good day in Shauna world. In Shauna teacher world, the computer's working, the overhead's working, the screen's working, like everything is working. Well, this morning, I got here a little late, didn't I? Where's, where's Olivia? I got here a little late, didn't I, Olivia? And yeah, and you. Mm-hmm. They were downstairs all excited because they got here before the teacher. So Shauna got here a little late. And then when I was setting up, guess what didn't work? The overhead. The computer. The Chromebook went black. I don't think it's dead, but it went black, and I couldn't figure it out. And I was already rushed for time. And so You did see me trying to work on it. You sure did. I couldn't remember my password because I had to change it this week. And the Chromebook didn't work. And then I have another thing that messed up, and I don't want Lee mad at me. I jammed the copier. If that is not the cliche issue of a teacher, I don't know what is, but I jammed the copier. And I'm just having one of those moments where I'm like, oh, what was me? And I kind of get puddled in that. But that's what Jesus is telling us not to do. Don't put all of our energy into riches on earth. Money stuff, the ability to do things easy, that that's not what God and Jesus want us to concentrate on. We want us to take those little tough moments where we don't feel as blessed or don't feel as rich or don't feel as, you know, able, and to turn those into moments where we can give and share and love. And so I had a little bumpy start to the morning, and you might have a bumpy back to school on some days, but we're going to figure out how to turn that around. So, the eight of us, huh? we got big numbers today. We're going to go downstairs and we're going to learn all about Joseph and his brothers and the amazing colors in his coat. You ready to go downstairs with me? Let's do a quick prayer. Dear God, at this time of year, at this time of year, it's easy to lose track of what really matters. We get tangled up in the chaos. We get to buy something. We forget to do something. Something breaks. We get discouraged. Jesus reminds us that these riches on earth are not what matter at all. So let's set our sights on the riches in heaven to help share and guide and love every day. Amen. proof of God's amazing love is this, 
While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Because we have faith in Christ, we dare to approach God with confidence. Let us admit our sins before God by using our call to confession. If you'd like to join us in the hymnal, it's hymn number 571. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Jesus knows our every weakness and loves us still. Awaken to the promise of Christ's amazing grace. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Therefore, let us be at peace. A reading from the book of Genesis. The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O oh Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless and the heir of my house of Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my home is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, this man shall not be your heir, no one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, look toward the heaven and count the stars if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, so shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord and the Lord reckoned it with him as righteousness. The word of the Lord. Psalm 33 is printed in your bulletin. Happy is the nation that worships you, O Most High. Happy the people you have chosen to be your own. You look down from heaven and behold all the people in the world. There is no ruler that can be saved by a mighty army. The strong are not delivered by their great strength. The horse is a vain hope for deliverance, for it is its strength it cannot save. Our soul waits for you. You are our help and our shield. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Hebrews. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith of our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen may be made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place 
that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land that he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs of him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that had foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered himself faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this is one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven and as the innumerable grains of sand on the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had the opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. The word of the Lord. I ask that you find yourself in a, your quiet place, as Jerry likes to say. Um, this is the time of the service where we uh, lift all of our prayers in our congregation and those around us. If you would pray with me. This human heat of August has given way temporarily, and we thank you, creating God. We thank you for fullness of possibilities this day holds for us and for all your children everywhere. We thank you for the dance of the seasons and know, O oh God, that you have created all that is out of the imagination of your creativity. You have painted our earth with brilliant colors, with tall mountains and deep valleys, with water and air and fire and with animals of every kind. You have created us in your image. How awesome it all is, and when we dare cast our gaze beyond Earth, the possibilities of the universe are endless, all created in your image and your imagination. How awesome you are, O oh God. How far beyond our own imagination is your strength and your glory, and yet you are the God who called to us at birth and send us your Son to be our guide and your Holy Spirit to sustain us. As big as you are, we still breathe your breath and share in the image you call good. As we bow to pray this morning, God, we pray for more strength for ourselves, more tasks to do for you and for your children who need. Give to us more ministry to do. Give us work to do in your name. Call us until we rise up and give a drink to the thirsty, a piece of bread to the hungry, and a garden to grow for those who are willing. Give us more to do for you, O oh God, and give us the strength and the courage to be bold, not for accolades, but in thanksgiving for all that you are. Call us to be people of work, O oh God, and give us the energy to serve, with the sick, we pray your healing. With the broken, we pray your wholeness. With the lost, forlorn, grieving, we pray your presence and guidance. With your church in every place, we pray your spirit be among us, that we might be united in mind and in mission to the glory of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Our gospel reading for today comes from Luke chapter 12. And while it says in the bulletin verses 32 through 40, I actually went a little bit before that starting at verse 22 for those that would like to follow in the book in your Bibles. He said to his people, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? If then are you not able to do a small thing as that, why do you worry about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow and is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not keep striving for what you are to eat and what you are to drink, and do not keep worrying. For it is the nations of the world that strive after all these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, strive for his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for the master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would have not let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If you would, bow your head with me. I'd like to bless the words to which we speak this morning. Please hear Psalm 19, verse 14. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Do not be afraid, says Jesus. The beginning of our text today is the ending of the gospel story from last week. Jesus tells the disciples that they should not worry about what they will wear. Life is more than food and clothes. Consider the ravens, he tells them, they neither sow nor reap, and yet God feeds them. So stop worrying. Worrying does nothing to make your life better, nothing to make it longer. Do not be afraid. It is God's good pleasure to give to you the kingdom, the kingdom, not wealth, not power, not possessions, not a thing unto which you can cling or to hold, the kingdom. And yet in multiple places this week, panic ensued in public places. When the waters rose in eastern Kentucky, don't worry. It's rather difficult not to worry 
about the rising tides when it comes so close to home. From Hyman, home to my grandmother, Carol Smith Codell, to Whitesburg, home of our friend, Rod Fields. For months to come, we will need to continue to look out for our brothers and sisters in what they love to call the 606. And that's just the, the immediate of our worries. Now, I don't know about you, but if allowed the time, there's a lot I could worry about. A lot. And, promise, and the promise of a kingdom light years away, removed from me by space and by time, and apart from this life, does some good, but doesn't really assuage the worry I could conjure if I was given to worry. Our church kids are struggling with issues. Our church kids have wonderful parents, good homes, and plenty of advantages when one thinks of the children in our town who don't have the support, it worries us. Not just for now, but the future as well. There may not be a nuclear arms race between the superpowers on the scale that it was back in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s, but nuclear weapons anywhere are a threat to us all. Are humans affecting change in the chemistry of the planet? Is world population exploding to the point where a planet will fail? How am I going to pay off credit card bills, make tuition payments, give my child a chance at a future? Will the church have enough money to meet its obligations? Will you, our congregation, stay healthy, stay happy? I mean, I can conjure up some things to worry over if I took the chance to worry. And ideology, excuse me, and ideologically, driven violence to that, and it is difficult to hear this word from Jesus, to say that the least. But our Lord reminds us that such worry is fruitless in living the lives that his followers are called to live. His advice, sell your possessions, give alms, store up treasures for heaven, be dressed for action, and have your lamps lit. Be ready, be ready. And he's right, he really is. Be ready for action. That's usually the stuff of the Gospel of Mark, but it makes an appearance here in Luke. Be prepared, be ready for action. The day is coming when the Son of Man will be coming at an unexpected hour. Do not be caught off guard. Now, if you drive up US 27, you can see the message just about everywhere. US 27 is the one way to get to Camp Wakandaho, which I know that Shauna and our youth and maybe many of you others are pretty familiar with. There are the orange signs along the way with a cross on one end and a clock face on the other. They say, Jesus is coming. Are you ready? And of course, there's more than the orange signs. There's the signs that are dotted along the highways going south. We see them every time we go to the panhandle. Be ready. What if it's true? Jesus is coming. Be prepared. And now the information on the superhighway of the World Wide Web, as we know, is cluttered with signs of the apocalypse as well. Tens of thousands of websites dedicated to getting you to change your life now because this could be the very moment when the horn sounds and Jesus returns. Be prepared. How much attention do you pay to it? Answer honestly. How much does it affect your day or even this given moment that you believe Jesus might return and begin handing out judgment based on whether or not you abided by the Ten Commandments? How much does that change how you speak to your children, how you speak to your spouse? How much does it color what you do with planning for your retirement? What percentage of your thinking space has been reserved in the past week for planning for the return of Jesus? Well, then you see that difficulty that Jerry faces week in and week out in making texts like this relevant for us today. We have some vague remote sense that 
We should live our lives as if Jesus were coming today, but it continues to be vague in a vague remote sense. It just doesn't climb up on the priority list when school starts in another week, or you get a bad report from the doctor, or your mother is in the hospital again, or the air conditioner goes out in your home, and then a week later it goes out in your mother's home. As I said, some vague remote sense that Jesus may come again and it may mean something about rapture or Armageddon, but we don't really know and there's too much stuff pressing on us daily to really spend much time thinking about that or changing something about the way we live. And alongside this idea here in Luke that we ought to be ready for the coming of the Son of Man, that we ought to sell our possessions and give alms. Now, how many people are lining up at the auction house tonight to sell your possessions, to give money to the poor? It's not that we covet our possessions. I'm leveling no accusations there. But if we were to sell our houses and cars and clothes tonight and the end of the world isn't tomorrow, then what do we do? Where will we be? What preacher in his right, in his or her right mind, will command everyone to sell everything because the end is imminent? The day it didn't happen, would they all be angry and banging out the church door? Sell all you have. Be ready. The end is near. What effect would that have? on you if that were the message that was being preached. While this is a difficult message, as many that there are in the liturgy, I don't intend to water down the demands of being a follower of Jesus. However, consider how Jesus' instructions at the front of this passage begin. And I quote, it's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. If we set our focus there, we can see the discipleship emerges not from fearsome demands, but from the outpouring of God's love. Divine generosity sets the tone for all of God's good expectations. The generosity of, excuse me, of God is greater than we ever imagine or would realize and is present with all of us at times and it allows us to set our hearts and treasures in alignment. It allows us to integrate faith and living in a cohesive whole. When we accept that God intends to give us all that we can imagine and more, it sets us free to live a generous and a grateful life, which we can begin to do when our hearts and our treasures are aligned. God treasures you, what do you treasure? In the telling of the movie scene, in, a movie, in the scene of the movie Anchorman, the main character played by Will Ferrell causes a motorcycle ridden by Jack Black to crash by tossing a, a burrito out his car window. Jack Black, the character says, you destroyed the only thing I love, what do you love? Well, Will Ferrell responds with, a brief list punctuated by his love for Baxter, who is on the scene and is his loving dog. Of course, Jack Black picks up the dog, says, now this is happening, and punts him off into the Coronado Bridge and into the San Diego Harbor. What do you love? What do you treasure? There's no doubt there's truth to the statement of Jesus, where your treasure is there, so too will your heart also be. We give effort, effort to the things we love. We pour our earthly treasures into the things, our heart treasures. We sacrifice for that which we treasure. We give extra effort for that which we treasure. 
we give ourselves to that which we treasure. We give our hearts. What do you treasure? Jesus was born into a generation of people who apparently treasured wealth and earthly riches. He, he heaps his most stinging criticisms onto the shoulders of the wealthy of his day who preferred their wealth over their religion, over their kingdom of God, over care of widows, of orphans, of all those alike. Apparently in Jesus' generation, the wealthy neglected to care for anyone but themselves and were failing to live without regard for the coming kingdom of God. They were living as if there would also be a tomorrow. Always be wealth. And that the most important thing was to accumulate and dominate. And that leads us back to the apocalyptic end time thought with which we began. I suspect the place where the story of the end of times and the return of Jesus makes intersection with our lives is what we're going to do with our lives and our wealth between now and the day the Son of Man returns. What do we do with the space we have today? What will we do with what we have today? Will we place ourselves in the service to the kingdom of God or will we place ourselves in the slavery to our things our earthly wealth. I suppose that's the real question we have to ask ourselves and we have to answer. Clearly, it is the good pleasure of God to give us the kingdom, but the kingdom of God and not the kingdoms of this earth. I suppose we just have to decide what we treasure and where we will place our hearts and our efforts until the Lord returns. What are your treasures? What is on your heart? Faith will be your guide. Do not be afraid. Do not worry. And be prepared. Amen. If you would like to find a church home, luckily our church is looking for people that are trying to find a church home. Um, we welcome you to the invitation. Our hymn is number 351, Fill My Cup, Lord, verses 1 and verses 2.
peace of Christ be with you. Wave, greet your neighbors, say hello. As you return to your seats, so often we want, only want to hear the words of encouragement and support from Scripture. We love to focus on the Jesus loves me positives, yet much of the Bible challenges readers with hard teachings and decisions. Luke records some of his te Jesus' teachings found in 33 through 34. Sell your possessions and give alms, offerings for the poor. For where your treasure is, your heart will also be. So you're invited to share the financial gifts today, knowing some of what you will give, in fact, will go to this month, the church world service, the crop walk, and then here locally, the Clark County Public Schools Back to School Backpack Program. It is the pleasure of God to give us the kingdom of heaven. It is through these gifts that, that we give to others the kingdom of heaven. With gratitude for the challenge in Jesus' teachings, let us receive our morning offer. Let us pray. As we're reminded, Lord, uh, by the wonderful message that Blanton has given us all this morning, we, are wor we worry. We worry about today. We worry about tomorrow. We worry about next year. We need to focus ourselves as we come to the table and let us all remember that this is our peaceful house. We let our worries go and be one with God. Let our offerings come together in our wealth. Give what you can so that we can continue to bless those that are around us, not only in our homes, our community, our schools, and other churches and nations. Bless us for all that we give and for all that you do. Amen.
may be seated. We are not only a church of good neighbors, but we are also a church that is inviting and inclusive. This table is God's table, and we are just stewards for him. It is because of his openness and love that we are all, all invited to his table. Join us in celebrating communion with him. And on the night he was betrayed, he took a loaf of bread and gave thanks and blessed it, saying, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray. God of Abraham, Sarah, Mary, and Jesus. Through the ages, you have called your people to follow you on the path of faith. Where your people have called out in hunger, you have given them bread. Here at the table, we come in faith to receive the bread of life. As we eat this bread, help us remember the living Christ who stayed true to you, even in the shadow of the cross. Open your hearts to your spirit so that we may grow in faith to you in love and service to our neighbors. Amen. Likewise, he took the cup. He passed it to the disciples and said, Drink of this, all of you, as you do this in remembrance of me. May we continue to pray. As we take this cup, I'm reminded of the lyrics of a song. Jesus died, my soul to save. My lips shall still repeat, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin has left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Amen.
with people around the world. Let us partake of the cup together. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you that in this sacrament, you assure us of your goodness and your love. Accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving and help us to grow in love and obedience that we may serve you in the world and finally be brought to that table where all your saints feast with you forever. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work for your praise and your glory. In your name we graciously pray. Amen. What do you treasure? We give of our hearts to treasure. We give so that we may receive God's kingdom. Go and be God's kingdom in our world. Amen. <laughs> 